What's up guys, uh, this is Mr. Cryptic and today I'm going to be checking out this video. It says one month from Starfield or until Starfield and what can we expect. So let's go ahead and watch this guy. It's about 12 minutes long and we'll see what his thoughts are and I'll be like saying my thoughts as well because I'm like, is this like how it's really going to be or, or what's going to happen? So let's go ahead and jump in here and find out what this guy has to say. Let's reveal the latest creation, Starfield. Finally, a new game from a company who continues to produce sequel after sequel of the most beloved franchises. The Elder Scrolls and Fallout are still some of the biggest franchises in gaming today. But it's been over a decade since we had an Elder Scrolls game, and the new one is not on the horizon anytime soon. And while it's fair to say, the Fallout franchise hasn't exactly gone in the direction that Bethesda would have wanted with the release of Fallout 76. But whilst Bethesda's track record... Now that I will agree, Fallout 76 was kind of bad. Uh, I never really got into the Fallout series, and I did play a little bit of Elder, Elder Scrolls, but he's right, they're still popping, especially Elder Scrolls, and since Elder Scrolls has so many, like, modding abilities, and I think Fallout does too, but I don't really play Fallout much, uh, I think that's really going to make this game last as long as Skyrim, possibly, and if people can do exactly what they want and mod, like, the levels to where you can actually land on the planets and everything like that, it's going to be killer. If that's possible. I don't know if it's possible because you know, I don't know how, how everything generates or anything. But let's go see what else he has to say because that's what I think. That's what I think is going to happen. Is modders are going to take this game, take it to the next level like they always do. And then this will be one of their hits again. This is what they do. Record as of late hasn't exactly been the best. And fans like myself have been very concerned over their future. The release of the Starfield trailer and reveal event in general has me extremely hyped for the next game. But should I be? And should you be, more importantly? Firstly, let's take a little look at why people, like me, are so concerned over Bethesda. The 2000s decade was absolutely superb from Bethesda. We saw some absolute masterpiece games, such as Morrowind, Oblivion, and Fallout 3. We have to look no further than the Fallout franchise itself to really see what's happened to Bethesda. You see, the release of Fallout 4 in 2015 was pretty mixed. I personally really enjoyed the game and think it's still one of Bethesda's better games. To me it still has that Bethesda charm. It allows the player to explore an open world where the stories aren't told to the player in black and white and instead are left open to interpretation. There's some interesting NPCs you'll find on your travels alongside a variety of side quests which will have you doing a lot of different things. Now that I thought was going to be true too. I actually bought an Xbox Series X for that. And it was like a Fallout Xbox Series 76, Xbox Series X. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Um, Xbox One X. I think it was, yeah, Xbox One or X. I don't think, I hadn't had a Series X. And uh, I was like, okay, cause that'd be kind of cool. I could play this game and whatnot. Then I loaded it up and it was buggy as hell. I was like, what the hell is going on with this game? <laughs> this is not what I expected from Bethesda. And I've heard that it's got better, but I haven't really put anything towards it because my first experience, you know, there's a lot of games I've played it just, I play it once, I wait a little while, come back, if it's, it's not as good as I think it's going to be, then I just let it go, because it's just no point in putting money into it, you know, or time, your time in it, if anything else. In the open world, Fallout 76 on the other hand, is a complete mess, and probably deserves another video on its own, which I might make at some point. But to condense it quickly for you, the main issue I have with Fallout 76, is that it completely took away the charm that Bethesda games have. This charm created through interesting locations, NPCs and side quests, is ripped out of this game completely. See, that's what I was saying. When I went there, it was empty. There was nothing there. It was weird. So, what was I supposed to do? I don't know. I had no direction. This to me really exposes the rough edges the Bethesda games have. And it's no surprise really, because they've been using the same engine for almost 20 years now. So that's a little quick recap for you. Of the highest point of Bethesda in the mid 2000s to the lowest point of Bethesda, which came after the release of Fallout 76. It's fair to say then, Bethesda really do need another hit, so they can recapture the spot of the company who makes the most elite, immersive RPGs on the market. So, how's about you take all the ideas you've implemented in the Fallout franchise and the Elder Scrolls franchise, both of which have had multiple decades to expand and create ideas that will become That's staples true. in Starfield? So, last year, Bethesda would officially reveal parts of the game with about 8 minutes of gameplay and well, it looked pretty bad, let's be honest here. 
The gameplay they showed looked really outdated and very clunky. The graphics were average, and the gameplay didn't even look like a step up from Fallout 4, which came out 8 years ago now. So going into this reveal a month ago, I was not only skeptical- I'm gonna be honest, when I first saw this, I thought it was awesome. I was like, oh cool, it's a Fallout game without the Fallout features. I like that, because I don't like Fallout features. So the fact that I can go around shooting people like I do like in Call of Duty or something like that, I like that, you know? And it is first person here, but I believe you could do it in, in it might just be like triggered in or something, but uh, zoomed in. But uh, I'm gonna play third person. I don't, I don't, if it's the first person like this, I have some issues. I like, I like the, I like the third person view. Cool of Bethesda, due to their previous work such as Fallout 76 and Fallout 4, but was also worried at the gameplay they had shown of this game. It was just simply below st I don't know, maybe I could play it in first person because it makes it more like experienced, you know? I don't have to see my character all the time. I'll take that back. Standard. I mean, seriously, if you're going to show eight minutes of your new big project, it's got to be good. So a month ago, when I sat down to watch that reveal event, my expectations were very low. Bethesda's track record and the recent announcement had completely finished off the hype for me. But just 45 minutes later, and I was absolutely fascinated by what Starfield can provide as a game. The open world and exploration looks to recapture what Fallout 76 couldn't do and bring back that Bethesda charm that we all love. I can't pretend that I'm not a bit worried about the random generation with the planets. Yeah, this is going to get me too. I wonder if it's going to be like, um, is it going to be like No Man's Sky where everything's just like looks crappy? Like all the stuff is just made up. It doesn't make sense to be where it's at. Or is it they actually have like a, a mechanic that says, hey, this is, we want a more realistic approach to things. And if that's how it's going to go, then we need to make sure it stays that way so it doesn't get too far fetched and, and breaks the experience. Because that's the thing about No Man's Sky I didn't like. It broke the experience for me because it's just like weird stuff out there that would make any, no sense in whatsoever in the planetary biome that it was in. It just made no sense. So. That right there alone made me get to the point where I couldn't even stand, like, playing No Man's Sky. You know, No Man's Sky did it, and they've eventually got it right, but can Bethesda get it right on their first time? I'm not so sure. But the actual planets that have been handcrafted by Bethesda look absolutely incredible. That's true. The city they showed off is the largest one they've ever made, and the love and detail that's gone into that is there for everyone to see. I also like the different factions and different vibes each planet will have. They showed off a western town, which is a complete contrast to the futuristic city they showed off. I'm really hoping that this goes hand in hand with the role playing. You know, I think they did that for the Fallout people. Like, hey, you can be part of Starfield and still play Fallout. You can still have that like old school in the vault kind of feel. You know, I believe that's why I honestly believe that's why they did that. Aspect of the game and how you can choose what type of character you want to be and then maybe set up your base on the planet that most suits your character. Something like this is what is going to give the game a lot of replayability, you know, similar to the base building in Fallout 4 or the house building in Skyrim. Stuff you can spend a lot of time on and not do the main quest. When you add to this the skill tree they showed off, and you have a game that not only has an interesting looking main quest that they also showed off, but a game where you can take your own path and end up making your own fun, which is at the core of every good Bethesda game. I really like that stuff, attacking from the air, and it says boost jump is... 10 times while in combat and you can like upgrade your pack that's pretty cool i like that and i like how they have the um the o2 um sensor down there and the co2 sensor to show your enemies down on that one spot it's really clean you got your weapons and stuff on this side um i don't know if it's gonna be good for widescreen i don't use widescreen so i don't worry about that but for people that use the ultra widescreen then i don't know what that's gonna look like or they're gonna shrink it down i don't know but it looks good to me i like this i like the clean and, and um interface i like the xp bar that shows it's not destructive or anything it's just there to let you know what's happening game we've had in the past and it's a very promising sign but this is still mostly stuff that i expect from bethesda even when and that's cool right there just being able to soccer punch people while everybody else is just shooting at you just running through there getting a perk to just be like a badass punching guy that's that's really cool it makes you think of, it makes you think of one punch man you know just going through there just punching the hell out of them they're flying up in the air it's just hilarious. Some of their troubles over recent games, they are still to me the company that put out some of the most immersive RPGs on the market, and therefore I expect no less from their big project. These are things that Bethesda are known to be great at, 
And with the poor reception of Fallout 76 not having these features to the level we expect, I would expect Bethesda to therefore keep improving on the core pillars of their title to ensure that the foundation of Starfield is strong. But what about the stuff that I'm not so certain about? And mainly, the stuff that we've never really seen Bethesda attempt before. To start with, I want to answer the question, if Bethesda are really capable of implementing these features, are they- I wonder what these features are, because what I just saw was something I didn't know was in the game. That was interesting. So do you get to solve like murder mysteries and stuff? If so, that's really cool. Because you're like, maybe that's one of the missions, side missions, you're like, hey, somebody murdered this person, we have to find out who this is, and then you're a bounty hunter trying to find who that person is. Like, that would be kind of cool. Are they really a progressive company in the year 2023? For example, in the past, they were able to turn Fallout, which is a top-down role-playing game, into a full-blown, first-person role-playing game experience. Or even the little details, like the ability to sprint in Bethesda's new games, which in their previous titles seemed impossible. So how does this relate to Starfield? Well, in my opinion, this is the boldest step Bethesda have ever made, with the introduction of space travel and randomly generated planets. And this is where I have my concerns. Whilst at the time, Bethesda switching from the top down to first person with a Fallout franchise seemed revolutionary. But with a bit of high Yeah, this is how I'll play right here. I like this way because I like I like games like uh what was that game? Army of Two and stuff like that where you're behind the person. I like the the division where you're behind the person. I like games that you're behind the people. I like that um Exo Primal, you're behind the player. So that third person view is what I like to play in. Um, sometimes the first person view just isn't enough for me to see things. So yeah, this is good. Hindsight, it might not be as revolutionary as we first thought. Many other games were already using first person and they were using it pretty well. However, how many games can you name today that are using randomly generated planets or randomly generated areas in general Look how cool that and is. end up keeping you interested throughout their worlds? Minecraft probably does it best. But the way you experience a game like Minecraft is much different, with you really steering the direction of what story you want to tell, rather than the game leaving you hints and letting you piece together the story. And I, I haven't really gotten to Minecraft. I don't know what that is. I mean, I have it. I own it. But I've never really got played it. I did the whole NVIDIA RTX thing to see how it looked and everything like that. It, like, killed my 3070 or whatever it was. So I got 3090 now, so I ain't worried about it. But uh, I was like, what the hell? It didn't kill it, but, it, you know, it slowed it down. Another game like this is No Man's Sky, which if you've seen my video on it, which I totally recommend you check out, you will know that it took them years to get the random generation right, and they're still at a level where it's not quite perfect. I feel that the stories told in Bethesda's previous titles won't be able to be told in random generation, and these little hints that Bethesda give you of something that may have happened in this area just simply won't be there. Well, the difference between uh, No Man's Sky and... Starfield to me is um, they have Microsoft behind them. They have a money pit behind them. So if they need it and the game pops off what they're wanting it to, then Microsoft's going to throw that money to Bethesda and they're going to have that product they want. And to me, I think the generation stuff will be okay. Um, they've already showed off a lot of it, so we know it looks good. Um, but that being said, there's things for errors and bugs and all that stuff and shit happens. And when that happens, then there's nothing you can do about it. So what he's saying there is, I don't like, I don't like Starfield. I mean, I don't like um, No Man's Sky, but Starfield to me is a better game than No Man's Sky because the story, story in No Man's Sky made no sense to me. It was all jibber jabber, this and that. I didn't have any like really quest people. I had to learn languages to get quests. I don't want to do all that. I just want to get a quest. Take off, do what I need to do, come back, explore the world. I don't have to learn a new language to play a game. These points of interest that are randomly generated, you might visit once, and you might see them on another planet, but once you've seen it once, you've probably already seen all there is to see. There's been reports of over a thousand planets in Starfield, and I do have to question, is this really necessary? I totally get. That now, the thousand planets per pl uh, on the game could be cool, because Think about this. Let's say the main game is 50 some plus hours, right? I, I think that's what they said. Uh, those could be using the planets in that area for that story, right? But let's say the next expansion pack, we can use other planets for the expansion pack. So not only are you experiencing the story from different planets you're going to and you're exploring different planets, but they can also expand any of the stories on any of those planets and build new, you know, um, 
new races, new new storylines, everything, you know, new things to explore. Space is pretty much like endless. You can do whatever you want in space, basically. And it doesn't really have to meet what we believe or what we think will be true. It kind of contradicts what I said earlier. But that being said, I think that this is ultimate game for um, Bethesda to be making right now because you could do anything with this game. Anything. And it would probably make sense. On one hand, it creates this aspect of a game where you feel like you will always be exploring and you will never run out of things to explore, which for a space game is kind of necessary. But at the same time, I just think that they could have a couple hundred planets or even a hundred planets and still achieve the same feeling. Games like Fallout 3 or even Skyrim, their maps aren't that huge on first glance. But once you get exploring, you just realize the amount of... Yeah, but see, the thing about 100 planets is once you explore 100 planets, you'll, you'll have nothing else to explore. For us to be able to explore 1,000 planets, that's a lot of time. That is a lot of stuff. You're not going to explore everything in this game in one year. I promise you that. Unless you just play non-stop and you have no life, then yeah, probably not going to happen. So, reason why I think they did this is because of what I said earlier. Future content, different stories, and all that stuff. And it gives longevity to the game. So, and it's all about building bases. So, if you can find the perfect planet to build bases and generate resources and income, then I wonder what's going to happen after that. Like, what's the DLC going to be about? You know, that's kind of cool. Kind of cool they have all this stuff uh, planned the way they did because they probably want this to be a 10 to 20 year game. They don't have to make another one for 10 to 20 years detail put into them and they are endless fun and you will still find new places to this day so overall in starfield i do believe there'll be a solid amount of planets but fezda have really worked on to keep up that same level of exploration as seen in games like skyrim there will also be lots that just feel like barren wastelands which might be cool to simulate that sort of fallout experience but there's just going to be a lot of them in my opinion see that's another thing what i like about this see that planet behind it that's real time that's not like just up there. That's exactly what that planet looks like in the solar system in which you're exploring. So you got to keep that in mind too. There's a lot more mechanics behind this than it is between No Man's Sky. It's also quite obvious that these main planets are going to be ones tied to the main quest. So I do wonder what the side quests are going to be like. Are they also going to be on these same planets? Or are they going to be fetch quests where you go to these barren wastelands and get useless items? Another key area of the game that I'm a bit skeptical now, the thing about the useless items, anything in space ain't going to go get something to be useful because if you get paid to do it and you get upgrades to do it, it's not useless. It's, it's part of the game. Every game has useless mechanics, but they end up being something different, you know, some kind of reward or something. They're not, I doubt they're going to make like quests that you go out there and you're just doing it to do it. They already said that they have some the planets they're going to do quests on, and then they're going to have planets that don't have anything on it, and they're going to let you know that it's just going to be a resource planet and nothing else. So, I don't completely agree with that last statement, but we'll see what happens. You know what I'm saying? Skeptical about is a space travel, as we've never seen Bethesda try anything like this before. In their previous titles, we've only seen transport of two different methods, and that is on foot and by horse. True. So for them to be now trying space travel where you can craft your own spaceship, is quite intimidating. I'm sure they've worked for hours to ensure that it's not so much of a scary proposition, but I still have my reservations, and I do think that on launch it could be a mess. I do think a lot of the issues I've just gone over will be launch issues. I don't think it's going to be a mess at launch because you have to earn your parts. You can't just go in there and build a ship. You have to earn parts. You have to get money to get uh, to buy parts and stuff like that. So. It's not going to be a mess right at the beginning. If anything, they could probably patch it all up if there's any problems with the first people that get them before half the people get it. So we'll see. Well, I don't know. I haven't played the game, so I don't know. We'll see. But that's what they're saying. That's what I've heard anyways. And we'll probably be ironed out eventually. But Bethesda really can't afford to do that. And we as a player base should not let them do that to us again. Starfield should be the start of Bethesda's redemption arc. Not another AAA title gone to the wayside of poor development and corporate greed. Because you can blame Bethesda, you can blame Microsoft, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Because if this game fails, they would have failed to recapture the imagination of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and even millions of players. And that will finally prove to me that Bethesda are not capable 
of making a AAA game that is quality enough anymore. Well, I'm starting to get think nobody can do AAA games for quality anymore. Halo failed, Call of Duty failed, Overwatch failed, um, Cyberpunk failed. All the great studios back in the day, World of Warcraft failed, uh, Diablo 4 is starting to fail. I mean, it's all right, but it's, it's starting to fail. Um, it's like nobody's putting effort to put anything in there anymore, and it's weird. You know, it's all these companies that we put our trust in on stuff and then build all these great games, and then they're bringing us crap like this. And I kind of agree with him with this. Will this be a great game? I don't know. I'm hoping it's going to be a great game. I'm waiting for it. It's what I want to play. That's what I'm going to start playing on this channel. And um, I'm just like, you know, will it be as great as we want it to be? Probably not. But we can only wait and see. I don't even want to get started on the engine they're using. Because if I find out it's the same one they've been using for the last 20 years, then I would believe this game is already doomed to begin with. And I do quickly want to mention at the end of this section that yes, this game will- Well, we already know it's Creation Engine 2, so it's not the same one. The Creation Engine was the one for Fallout, Fallout 76, Fallout, all the Fallouts and Elder Scrolls and all that stuff. Uh, this is part two, so it's kind of the same engine, but it's got more um, mechanics to it that makes the games look better and look, that's awesome. If you look at that star for you can see all the, sh the, sh the, um, the glare off of it and the cosmic, the cosmic dust in it. We'll run at 30 that's frames, really cool. and that is a huge issue for me. This wouldn't have been so much a problem 10 years ago, but we've become so used to 60 FPS games and even 120 FPS games now, that it's going to be very noticeable that this game is lacking compared to countless games on the market, including so many AAA games that have taken the Switch to 60 or 120 frames. This obviously once again comes down to the large amount of planets and generation that has to take place, which is another reason I don't think it's necessary to sacrifice the performance of the game graphics probably have something to do with this as well and i don't understand why companies focus so much on graphics nowadays instead of performance because that's what people want if people if you look at this game and they look at those rocks and say oh they're blurry that's so 2012 they're gonna downgrade the game you know they're like well, whatever it looks it's blurry it's not right it shouldn't be that blurry it's 2023 even though they're like indie games that have less graphics, it's because it's a studio that's trying to make a great game for everybody and a big game. that are like, oh, my, my computer can't run this at 60 frames per second, yet my computer's 10 years old, yet I want to play the latest and greatest on the highest graphics. That's the reason why. Because they're not going to put the effort into it because people are just going to bitch about it anyways. So when they do it this way, they give a little bit of best of both worlds. They try to balance it out, I guess. I mean, I don't know. That's the way I look at it because I've seen a lot of people bitch about games that didn't look like they should do. Should look like you did at the very beginning of the video here. It was like, oh, when I first saw the impressions, it didn't look that great. It looked like it was a, it was an engine from ten years ago, and then, you know, and then he's talking about how this is, and, they, and the graphics do look amazing. The new one does look amazing, and he is saying that. But the thing is, that's why they do it because they don't. People are going to bitch about it anyways. So, why, why worry about it? I would much rather a game looking like Fallout 4, which is decent and looks like a 2015 game, than a game like a 2023 game that still runs at 30 FPS, but looks incredible. This might have already ruined some- So, to be honest with you, okay, I, I misunderstood what he said. I take back what I said about what he said. Um, but he's kind of right. 30 frames per second on console from what I heard. I heard they unlocked 60 frames now, but PC is going to get 60 frames or whatever, I can't remember what they said. Um, but I don't believe that you should sacrifice a game that's focused on exploration and seeing things you normally don't see in a beautiful world. You should not sacrifice like graphics for that. You should lock your frames where there's no, like, what's it called, built-in or clipping, no clipping. So you don't see the processing coming in it should be locked to a point of where the game looks flawless all the time because if you get that clipping and popping and stuff it blocks immersion so you're like when you block immersion it takes you out of the atmosphere it takes you out of the game it makes you not enjoy it as much so i truly truly think that they should lock the game at 30 or 60 on consoles and let pcs do whatever they want to because they have the power to do so 
But that's my personal thought. I don't know how y'all feel about it. Let me know down below. Some people's interest in the game, and I'm not surprised. Because if they don't implement a 60 FPS feature, I can see a lot of people being fed up with this game early on. Okay, now that I've got my scepticism out of the way, what are my real thoughts on Starfield and Bethesda as a whole? I can't hide the fact that I'm incredibly excited for this game. Yep. That showcase really won me over, and it's really something Bethesda had to do just a few months before. I do like the fact they do this. They show you where stuff's at. You don't have to, you don't have to figure it out. Because um, today's technology, we can probably scan a planet and find out what's in it. We do it all the time. Um, so... You know, this makes sense for 100 years in the future, or however many years in the future we are. And I like the fact that everything's just structured up like that. And when you land on it or you, you scan it, you can see structures, towns, whatever places you can, like, of interest. I like that. I like how it tells you the type, the temperature, um, all the flana and stuff like that tells you which. It's kind of like, this is more like No Man's Sky, but it says water is a chemical, so you can't drink the water on this planet. <laughs> So this is cool, I like this. Before release. More on the subject of the release, and I will definitely be trying this game on release, because it's on Xbox Game Pass. And if you're someone like me, and has some scepticism regarding Bethesda's recent track record, I would totally recommend you get the Game Pass for a month and try it out that way, as it saves you buying the whole game for about £70. As someone who's fascinated by space, and someone who loves No Man's Sky, which once again, I'll drop a little plug for my No Man's Sky video, I've always wondered what a story-driven game like this would look like, and that really looks... See, key point, right, what he just said, story, what a story-driven game would look like in this atmosphere, and that's what No Man's Sky had none of. So that's the reason why I couldn't stay with No Man's Sky. I gotta have a story, I gotta have a reason to, to explore the worlds. And then after story, I have reasons because I have, like, bases I have to build, I want to build bigger ships, and all that stuff, and it's really, really cool. And the thing about No Man's Sky is you could never afford a ship. The ships were too damn expensive. And then the stuff you had to go through, it was like way too much to go through. Like, this is pretty much, uh, I believe they said, um, what, collecting credits, doing missions, unlocking parts, buying stuff from the parts store, putting your ship together however you want, and then going on an adventure. And I know it's limited to how far you can go based on your engines and all that stuff because they don't want you to go out in space to be stuck. But, you know, that's cool. It's like what we're getting with Star Understandable. Field. Also, seeing some of these planets with more realistic graphics to a game like No Man's Sky is going to look incredible, and I have no doubts that the graphical aspects of the game are going to be stunning in certain areas. If Bethesda can ensure that the ship combat, ship travel, and random planet generation is revolutionary, then I do think this game will be a massive success. We all know that Bethesda can make a fantastic RPG, but the big question is, can they make a fantastic space RPG? And that's the real question with Starfield. All right, guys, I'll be honest. I really like this video. This guy has good um, projects. Hold on, let me find it. He has a these are good things point. Bethesda are known to be great at. And with the poor reception of Fallout 76 well, not that, having yeah. these features to the level we expect, I would expect Bethesda to therefore. Now, this scene is interesting. Because I wonder if you could be a drug lord. <laughs> you know, I wonder if you could be a drug lord. All right, guys. I think this is pretty good. I like this right here, too, because this reminds me of, I believe it was uh, Eve. Was it Eve? Not Eve, not Eve Online. Um, God, I can't remember. I used to play it all the time. It's the one, not Eve, the other one. Um, yeah, I can't remember what it's called. But that game right there, this reminds me of that, how you had to change your... Um, your settings on your ship to be able to either shoot your missiles or not. I can't remember what it's called, but you know what I'm talking about. And let me know in the comments below how stupid I am right now. And um, this is what people think of the game. It's going to happen. Recapture the spot. Of the That's what people think is going to happen to the game. But I honestly think it's going to be okay. I think it'll be all right. I think it's going to be a great game. Um, I could be wrong, but we'll find out in September, huh? All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share me out there and all that good stuff. And let me know what you thought about this, um, this guy's video and everything. And I'll put a link of his video in the description so people can go check it out themselves without me talking. So y'all can enjoy it that way as well. Plus, got to give uh, content creators credit for what they do. Until next time, guys. Have a great one. Peace.